He's he's bringing back these two guys that uh, are largely responsible for everything that you just talked about that Bob Iger did in the last 10 to 15 years, especially Kevin Mayer, uh, who was the one that was largely responsible for, I think, helping him close a lot of those deals with Pixar, with Marvel, with Lucasfilm, uh, even the Fox deal. And, and, and Iger's, at this point now, he's looking at, we have to dump all this stuff off, or we have to start selling ABC, which, look... <laughs> I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if you see Comcast talking about maybe we should just stop broadcasting on NBC in the next five. So let's sell NBC. I don't think they're doing that tomorrow. But I think anybody with a major broadcast network is probably asking themselves some serious questions right now because of cord cutting or of not using over-the-air antenna rabbit ears anymore. Nobody's done that in, in a long time. Some people still do. But the point is linear broadcast or over-the-air broadcast is just going away. It's moving to streaming. So do you still need to contend with all these big, expensive, obnoxious, uh, you know, long-term broadcast contract deals? Probably not. You can get rid of a regulatory agency, the FCC. You know, I don't have to deal with them anymore. So I think a lot of people are looking at this. Disney is just in more dire straits than most of these other companies are. And I think that's what's, that's what's prompting them to act, uh, you know, just more boisterously. Every division is basically... Uh, is is being looked at at this point for you know being put on the cutting block, but I mean as it stands right now we've got Kevin Mayer and Tom Staggs. These were two people that were said to be the heirs apparent, or one of them would be the heir apparent to Bob uh, Iger back in 2016, the first time he was thought to retire, and he stuck around. By the way, Tom Staggs actually saved Bob Iger's life at one point, and they still ran him off. So I mean it's really you know. <laughs> There's not a lot of love lost probably between these guys, but I am curious on your take on this Valiant because mm -hmm. what we saw was this, this announcement came out about a week before the earnings call. Mm -hmm. And it was my belief that this announcement came out in order to try to buoy, buoy, however you want to say this, to lift up the uh, anticipation of the earnings call and try to uh, protect the, the stock value, which was dropping. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. There was a bump for like 24 hours, and then it, yeah. it fell apart again. Do you think that this is something that is substantive, or do you think that this is something that is, again, smoke and mirrors? Do you think these guys are actually, actually going to be given the ability to have practical impact on the comp company's trajectory, or is this, again, just a, a bit of showmanship out of Iger? The problem is we don't know exactly what they've really been tasked to do, right? We know what a at a, at a 30,000 foot view, we can make a reasonable assumption based on what's been stated in articles like this, that Staggs and Mayer are brought back to help Bob Iger put together some type of package to sell a portion of ESPN, like we talked about a little while ago, or to try to sell ABC, uh, to try to reposition some of these assets to where we can sure up a balance sheet for the Walt Disney Company. Or that, you know, basically to make room or to make it easier to affect a Hulu purchase, right? Um, what are they going to do? How are they going to do it? They obviously look, and I think selling things like ABC, like I said before, is more about getting rid of an asset that is dying now while you can still get something for it than anything else. I think that's probably a wise choice by Disney. You don't have to hang on to it for five more years, and in five years it's worth nothing. Um, you know, you, you're trying to figure but, out, are they there for a real reason? Or are they there advising in the same way that George Lucas supposedly <laughs> always advises? And you're like, no, George Lucas hates your stinking guts. You just throw his name out because there's a contract that says he can't really counter that and say, I would never work with these people again. Well, only Bob Iger would probably know that, right? Even though right. Uh, this would have been approved at a board level to, to, to make a hire like this, a contract like this. And the, the way they got reason... him was they picked up Candle Media, right? Which is this company they're both involved in. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is, you could sell it to the board as saying, well, I'm going to bring these two in because we really want to do X, Y, and Z. And then at the end of the day, Bob Iger's like, you're right. Like you're saying, pro, I'm going to do this for show, but I'm not going to really listen to him. I'm not going to let him really have any power. I'm not going to let they him can, do anything. They can quote unquote advise. Right. Uh, we, we don't know how, how far this is going to, but I will say this is that I'm sure this is going to come up during that earnings call in three days. If yes. Iger doesn't bring it up, somebody's going to ask about it, or somebody should ask about it. There's a lot of questions that people should be asking, uh, and I'm, I'm very curious. 
I'm very curious at this point to hear what the pre-scripted portion of Iger's remarks are going to be. And I feel bad for, and I can't even remember the person's name right now, the interim CFO mm -hmm. that's going to have to just walk into this hornet's nest. <laughs> I mean, it, this is something. It's like watching, it's like in sports, if you, if you watched a team that was a dynasty for a decade or more, right? And they've been a perennial favorite past that. And suddenly they are in the very bottom of the league. Sure, there are lots of people watching that, that team still, but they can't perform. And that's Disney right now. Mm -hmm. Disney is performing atrociously. Yeah. And, you know, I, 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 I don't even know what to think about this earnings call coming up and what it could contain. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll manage to skate through this and, and exceed expectations. But yep. I have a feeling that uh, they're being subverted. It's the magical subversion of expectations yet again coming yep. from Disney. Yeah, that, that's what I really don't know is what can we reasonably expect and, and what do we think that they're really going to try to focus in on with this right. earnings call. And that's what I just don't quite know. What's not know. on fire that they can accentuate? That's what, that's what we're watching for. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. That's the scary part. And I was trying to go back and bring up uh, another set of, of pieces here because I also I, wonder how many, how many questions are we going to get in this? Uh, I'm, I'm guessing about seven, man. If, if, if two or three of these questions are duds, it's going to be infuriating at the, at the same time that this company is going through what it's going through. I mean, you want to know, you want some good questions. So if we get about three of those that are just mundanity, it's going to, it's going to create some insanity in us. Well, I think that, I mean, you, a lot of the questions are going to be centered around, what do you think your cash flows are going to be? What are your expectations long range with Disney Plus? It really is going to boil down to how much, how much is Bob Iger going to address in the scripted portion of the call? That's the key, right? Yeah. If Bob Iger tries to dance and paint a mundane picture, like you said, a rosy or even a rosy picture well, it's not great right now, but things will things will get better and this and that. We're working towards this. If he doesn't answer the obvious fears and concerns of these analysts that call in, the people from JP, the people from Goldman Sachs, the people from Credit Suisse, Barclays, Morgan Stanley, go on down the line. If he doesn't answer or allay their fears during the call, they're going to show up in the Q and A session, and 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 they're going to they're going to hammer him. Well, let's hope um, because while the while the company is collapsing, we don't want to have those valuable questions wasted with something like, "Hey, Bob, this is Jim out of Goldman Sachs. Uh, can you talk about the ARPUs down in Argentina? I'm taking a look at this. It's a little bit lower than what we anticipated, but perhaps you're doing okay in Buenos Aires. You know, we don't need any, any crap like that. Like, ask the the poignant stuff that gets to the point of what in the world is going on at the House of Mouse. Ready.